So the next speaker is Matt Guttenberg from Carnegie Mellon. He's going to tell us about parameter estimation for battery models. Hi, so I'm Matt, and I um, just want to also give uh, some credit to the people who have also worked on the project as well who are listed here. Uh, Leaf, uh, Shashank, and Venkat, who's my advisor back at CMU. Uh, so kind of to give a brief overview of what we want to do with uh, battery models, just to give a sense of what we're doing. You know, when you're, whenever you're in one of these electric vehicles, be it electric aircraft, electric vehicle, electric car, you'd like to know when your battery's going to die. You know, rather not be driving down the highway and your car just suddenly stops. Um, so these battery models give us information such as, like, what is the current charge of the battery without actually having to break open the battery, which is important, again, for actually understanding the chemistry and the state of the battery itself. Um, and so the things that generally these battery models will track will be such things as that discharge, which is known as the state of charge, or the health of the battery, which is the state of health. And that kind of gives you an idea of, well, when I recharge the battery, how high can I actually go back up to that nominal capacity that I started off with? Now, batteries are a very complex device and involve numerous different equations, such as thermodynamic, electrochemical, and temperature stuff. So it really is something that you, if you model it very closely and you incor incorporate all the different differential equations, you're going to take a long time to simulate, but at the same time, if you use what's known as reduced order models, which really get rid of a lot of those accuracies in exchange for performance, you start to run into some errors there that you know, uh, could lead to further uh, degradation of your battery. Uh, so obviously, I think you can see where Julia starts to come in, but to first um, go through some of the problems that we have with battery models themselves, Here's a set of parameters that go into a battery model that's known as SPMET, which is a little bit different than the model I'm going to be talking about here. And what you see is that we get all these parameters that have uh, identified um, or are identified as uh, either identifiable or unidentifiable based on their sensitivity within that model. And so what you're seeing is that a lot of these critical parameters, again, the parameters that go into these differential equations that are either diffusion, transport, electrochemical, are really hard to measure from our different cycling data. And so this kind of led to our choice of using what's known as a Monte Carlo simulation for optimization. And so to go through the different ways that we've implemented, this is essentially the different settings that you could put into our algorithm, starting with a parent definition, loss function, new solution, annealing settings. And that all goes into the annealing uh, Monte Carlo algorithm that we then use to estimate the parameters for our model. And so for the parent, the parent is where you put all the parameters, whatever is related to that model that you're actually using, and this could be really of any type. And this is also where you put that initial guess, and this is where you'll really start out within the parameter search space field uh, when the algorithm starts to get going. And so the loss function could be really any uh, battery model. So this is where you start to say, well, maybe I don't want to use what we use, which is a daigle kukerne model, which is developed by NASA. Maybe I want to use uh, the SPMET model that I just mentioned. So this is where you can kind of bring anything there. And all that really needs is that, that one float, which is a cost. And we just optimize for lowering that cost. And I'll go into later how you can develop that cost function. And so the new solution is, again, really any method for picking the next step. So we could use Hamiltonian Monte Carlo uh, or other different ways of doing the steps. But as I've mentioned, those sensitivities really get into you when you're dealing with those Monte Carlo approaches. So for us, we found that the random walk tends to be the most effective uh, for our battery models, but there are uh, ways to do other stuff as well. And so then you get into the annealing settings, which really is the tempering and how you start to change the acceptance regions of the Monte Carlo, and is essentially lowering the ceiling as you go further and further into simulation, so you start to really hone in on the different uh, minimas of the parameters. And that's where you really can make sure that you're kind of starting to reach towards those global minimas by allowing more and more acceptance to be uh, brought in earlier. And then as you go through the simulation, you bring that ceiling down and you start to hopefully reach towards that global minima. And so here's what a lot of the parameters look like for our model. You can see that for a bunch of them, there's a large sweeping array across the different space, but some of them also really hone in into those deep wells that stay there. And so on this uh, plot, for each, these are all the different parameters in our model. And for each plot, the red X is a rejection. The green dots are acceptances with a lower cost. The blue dots are acceptances that have a higher cost, and then the yellow stars are current best solution. And so, as I said, it's a really wide uh, variance, but we have some methods that possibly can make some of those plots uh, look better. And so this is what our data looks like. Our model prediction looks like on a bunch of uh, different test sets. And this has taken a while, though, and we can see that we're actually doing pretty well uh, getting that. And then we can also do a state of health. And again, we do a pretty good job of capturing a lot of the uh, uh, physics that go on within the cycle test data. 
And so our model also has like these different compartments which again are customizable. So this is where that battery model itself can actually go in and you can start to tune around with whatever you want to do. And this is, we use a state-space model so that's where the step really comes in. And then you also have the profile. So this is where you kind of ma match your cycle test data. So if you have an, a cycle that's using five C or you know, five times capacity of discharge or you're using different temperatures, this is where you kind of tune that uh, cycle information. And then you can also bring in multiple trials. So if you want to do multiple different temperatures cycling and want to compare all that, that's where you would bring this in over here. And then lastly, this is how you kind of compare with the data. So maybe I want to focus in on the tail, really capture the minimum voltage, capture the different SOH there, whatnot. That's where you can kind of tune how you want to actually look at the cost function and go towards different uh, parameters that will really focus and get really accurate in different parts of the curve itself. And so this is just kind of an interesting thing. We took a look at an open source data that was built by NASA and just let the model go at it for a week and don't learn the parameters. You can see that we do a relatively good job of capturing a lot of the physics that were even within that data set that was never trained on before. And so because we are using Monte Carlo, we actually have an interesting result that we might be able to use a more stochastic way of looking at doing experimental design. So with batteries doing experimental discharge and drawing all the cyclers is actually pretty expensive and also very time consuming. And so this is a way that we might be able to use some of our testing and all the stochastic ways of getting the parameters to start learning from that and see if we can get a different way of choosing our experiments more thoughtfully and basing it on the information criteria in here. And so really what we've shown is that we, with Julia, which has really allowed us to speed up the process of the Monte Carlo and really allowed us to hone in on those parameters much more quickly, which is really not feasible with other codes such as Python or MATLAB, we've been able to really do a good job of getting those parameters learned. And that in the future, we might be able to use that stochastic method to learn different ways of really looking at the right experiments to learn the parameters in a better way. And then lastly, I do want to note that we actually will be open sourcing the code within the next few weeks. So, thank you. Good. If there's one very quick question, we can take it. If not, then uh, we're done. Uh, so, we have the photo now. So, please make your way down to the uh, courtyard that's opposite the keynote uh, room. So, you can exit the building just to the left of the main hall, I believe.